the big camera pictures and uh, no, not really. Again, it depends on who's taking the picture, but you have a, a, big, a bigger image sensor and bigger pixels, which means you have better low light performance with a big camera. You have uh, reduced noise, good dynamic range, all these things. And uh, I think the least technical way I've read about it is say that your iPhone has is sensor is two Legos size, two Legos, and your camera would be 12 Legos. So, you know, you can kind of see how that would uh, work uh, against the competition. But I love the iPhone. It does everything. My gosh, you know, in 30 seconds, I could prove my husband wrong by Googling it. It's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's wonderful. And, you know, you, you have a telephone and all those things that you'll, you'll never have on a camera. They're, gonna, they're a long ways from that. So iPhones improve every day, and um, excuse me, and this uh, is maybe what's coming up now. A lot, <laughs> a lot of lenses to to try improving it. Certainly, I just have looks like one. I think there's two here, but anyway, um, Peter showed me his has how many lenses is yours? Your thirteen? Uh, two. Two? two. Okay, it looked like a lot of circles. Anyway, I love the iPhone because you can just grab it and shoot when you find unusual things. And uh, so we were at a rest stop, and this was uh, just amazing to me. These folks had put um, their own pictures, and a lot of the pictures have their camper in it. On their, They had nailed it into the sides. It's a canvas shot on all three sides of their... Y'all need to try that. That would be a good idea. Anyway, <laughs> very good scenic stuff. Just took a picture of this little fashion statement there. I just think that's so cute. And uh, she never knew. What we have, um, it's fun to document, but what my dream has been, and this is not my shot, and these next three are not my shots. I took these going down the hallway on Princess Cruises. I love those pictures because people have entered a contest and they have won and got the privilege of having theirs, I don't know if there's any money involved, but got the privilege of having their um, pictures displayed on the walls of the ship. And I, that's been my goal for a long time. And I, so I go around and take pictures of the ones I like the best. And all this is good for photography because you need to study what is, have been winning photographs and um, then this lovely shot. And so I thought yesterday, I said, I wonder what's going on with the princess contest and they discontinued it in 2019 so that's that's not my dream anymore but i want to know what your goal is do you what is your goal for the iphone do you want to just do facebook is the or social media how many enjoy doing that social media i do okay and then what about would you like to frame your picture uh, would you like to send it to your relatives with just have better shots? Any comments? So, yes. I like to lighten my load. <laughs> lighten your load, yeah, yeah, okay. All right. So, um, there's some people have trouble with Facebook. We're not going to cover that. If you have any questions about that afterwards, I can address it. So, why is it, why is iPhone editing even needed. I mean, doesn't the iPhone do its best to make a beautiful uh, image for you? And um, Well, it really is set up to take not so great pictures. And when you think about it, it's like, why is that? Why would Apple do that? And it makes sense because they have to work with different light, different colors, different subjects, and it doesn't know what kind of, kind of picture you're trying to take. So it's going to give you an average photo. And why we are talking about editing is you want it to not be average, you want it to give you magical results. So this little fairy is going to give magic <laughs> to all of you, your magic dust, to learn to do some editing. And I gave you some handouts, kind of so you can follow. And then if there's something that appeals to you, just write on it on top of it. And here's uh, the first thing I wanted to say is before you start, it's a good thing to have grid lines, and you can't really see them on this one, but um, you can add those in your settings. <laughs> add HDR in your settings. Um, the um, 
can't see down there. But anyway, the the uh, live setting, I love the live, set, live setting. We'll talk about that. Some people are like, no, 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 because it takes up memory and blah, blah, blah. But you'll see some good in that, and you can always turn it off, turn it on. Uh, I just leave mine on. So we have here the 2X. You know, when you first bring up your camera, it says 1X and then 2X. So 1X is the wide angle, and 2X is a telephoto lens. So I enjoy using those, depending on the situation. And then, do you know, uh, just opening your camera phone, do you get somewhere and you're like, I've got to get it open, and you everything you do doesn't work? You know, it's like um, when you are uh, got your lock screen on and you're... You have some options. Ooh. You have, oh, doesn't show. Okay, you have some options. Huh? Here. I told okay. you that would happen. Oh, he told me this, <laughs> that it wasn't me, but I don't know if it's because I changed no. the screen or anything. No. Okay, I could go back to that. So on my lock screen, no, I didn't like my lock screen. Maybe pulling on the cable on the floor. Okay. Yeah. I'll work. I'll, when you're on your lock screen, you'll see the camera. And you can just push the camera. I have the worst time with that. But if I'm on the lock screen and I just slide it to the left, it opens it up quicker for whatever reason. If you're in a situation like this where you're already doing something, you can pull down and you've got a camera right there, you see. And so there's a lot of different ways to get your shot. But you're often in a hurry. So I think the sliding it to the left works well. Then if you're going to uh, take a photo, you've got several options there. Uh, you can uh, do the things we just talked about. I tried a shortcut. It's called, it's an app, and it says, say cheese. So, Because I really wish I had it voice activated, so I tried that one. And um, it's just kind of funny because you cannot say it with the camera open. So how are you going to line up your shot? <laughs> so you just kind of go, say cheese, and then it clicks and you get what you get. It's not great. Anyway, <laughs> there's some options. Yeah. Uh, another one is I forgot this when I had my um, when I had my um, I'm just forgetting that. Oh yeah, when I had the little button on my seven and I pushed the button and I could push it real hard and then it would do a burst of photos. But now it's up on the um, volume button, the top volume button. You just push and it does ten. 10 uh, pictures a second. So you're doing some active stuff. Somebody's running, playing, whatever. And you can kind of pick your best out of those. So it's a nice feature. Now, Betty, what yes. um, are you showing us here? What's up in the top right? OK, that is the live setting. So thank you for asking. So that little yellow thing, if it's yellow, it's on. And then if it's not, it'll have an X across it. So that one we'll get to in a minute. So um, then another thing to remember is when you push on your, um, you're, you're ready to take a picture and you push on the picture to your, what you're doing is you're getting the autofocus. Mm -hmm. And so with the camera, you're just doing the button down just a little bit. But here you just push and it shows you a yellow square. And if you push a little longer, it'll say A, E, A, F. And that just means that it's going to keep that focus. So you can see a little of that yellow behind the A, I think. Anyway, so it will keep you from getting the focus on the wrong thing. Maybe you're trying to focus on something on the right, but it's going to focus in the middle unless you put your finger on that. So. <laughs> I know. I'm afraid to leave my thing here, but yeah, just go to your, go to um, a, uh, go to, sure. look at me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. look at me. And, and <laughs> you hold uh -huh. your finger or your thumb on where you want it to focus and get the right exposure. Mm -hmm. That's A E N A F lock. Uh -huh. and but if I were moving back and forth, if you locked it, yeah, then you could, you wouldn't have to keep redoing so it, yeah. That will give you, that will focus on what you hold down, a long hold, a long hold.
long as fast. And then you just touch the screen and it goes away and you can focus on something right. else. Thank you, Carol. All right, so um, I'm going to, this is I love, even when you um, forget, you always have your phone in your pocket, don't you? The um, pictures that we take, the types of photos, are I'm calling camera modes. And so there's down at the bottom, when you're getting ready to take a picture, it has photo, and that's what you're using on. It has portrait, and that's why I bought my 11, moved up from the 7 to 11 because of that mode. They had the panoramic, the video. And so I just wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about these because don't get stuck in one. Uh, even if you're in the portrait mode, you can at least go wide angle or telephoto. But uh, when you look at pictures, I'm just going to throw some tips out, but it's nice to have some foreground. This was a beautiful day, and the waves are pretty, but without anything in the foreground, it would have been kind of boring. The um, same thing here. This is just a regular photo, and um, this is the panoramic, so you can really get a lot <laughs> more, and this is the kind of building that needed that kind of shot. So you uh, just put it on panorama and follow. It's sometimes hard to keep it really straight, isn't it? But anyway, just follow your arrow on the line. And then um, some things are just too pretty to just take one little shot. You need the whole thing. So um, then I got into the portrait stuff. So this is hundreds of flags, but I'm just focusing on the first few. And um, I like that a lot. I like this one a lot uh, because uh, not because it's my son and his wife, but because of the bokeh in the background. So that's that fuzziness, and that's what I was going for. If you, um, and let's see if I can do it. If you edit these, go edit, you can, you, can, you can change that. You can manage that. So if, if I had it this way, it'd just be an ugly kitchen. <laughs> but if I get it all fuzzed out, it looks pretty cool. I, I like it a lot. Anyway, so that's... Uh, a feature, you'll see a little F up there, and that's your F stop, and you're moving that, the lower those numbers, the more fuzzed out it is. How do you find that? I went to edit, but you have to have a portrait photo, and some of my portrait photos don't show that, so I don't know why. But anyway. Um, All right, so you take the portrait photo. <laughs> Edit. Mm -hmm. okay. Pretty. And the same here. I, if I want these mountains to show, I can go that way. So use your portrait to its full ability. And... Um, this is this is the problem with this. It's kind of a fake portrait, but as you can see up there, that rock is not fuzzed out. So when you get a real busy um, picture, that doesn't always work for portrait mode. And another example was this one. You see down here, this shows as normal, not not fuzzy, and. I only I would just cut this off, just crop it off. You couldn't with the other one, but I wanted to just show y'all what's going on there. And then one of your other camera modes is video. And this is a horrible scene. I went to the the stockyards and they had all this red light and it was dark in there and everything. But I was fascinated by this turtle, and so I um, did a little video, yeah, of them and those little deer. But then. What, I wanted to f focus on the turtle, so I just cropped him down, and I like the fact his neck looks worse than mine, so I just, <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's eating away. <laughs> Look at that. Anyway, I saw a picture on, on um, I saw a picture on YouTube, I mean on Facebook, that somebody had gone to the Galapagos, and it looked just like this, and it's like, hey, I went to the stockyards. Wow. Okay, this was a, something somebody else took, and um, this video was over in Gee. Estes Park area, and they had all these people, you know, they're pretty close to the elk, and so I, I went ahead and, and you, can, you can do a video, you can 
edit a video, uh, you can crop it, you can um, change uh, the contrast, the colors, all that, uh, just like a picture. So I just made it shorter, showing the kind of the fun part. But see, when you start cropping, this is, this is not a good image at all. I'll have to say somebody else shot it, you know, I said that. But anyway, <laughs> but, but that doesn't mean anytime you start cropping, I mean, the idea is to get close as you can. This one's uh, kind of fun. I like the slow-mo, and the reason I like it is it, the kids love it. If you take, do something with your grandkids, and this is horrible indoors and everything, but my grandson is Superman. Now, his legs got kind of in the way, but he had the whole motion, you know, going like that. And then he comes out, and he looks at it, he just loves it, you know, and he goes in again until he's exhausted. But just fun things to do with the camera. And this, uh, the other day, I set this up in the backyard, uh, I'm, well, my friend's backyard by the golf course. So this is the last one I was going to show you, is time lapse. And honestly, I had not used this, and I was really impressed. Wow. It can take like five, if you sit on a tripod, it might take five hours and condense it into 30 seconds. I so, understand that. Yeah, so it was really cool. I tried it with my flower, but I didn't have enough time, and you know, because I had an amaryllis that was growing two inches a, a day. But anyway, so within 30 How seconds. How long of an exposure was that? Uh, it was an hour and 15 minutes, and oh and it my. just, it won't do it over, uh, you know, it's not going to give you 30 minutes, it's just 30 seconds or something, yeah, so it's pretty cool, but put it on a tripod, <laughs> but I actually, you know, you know, if you don't have a tripod, this is what I did, I looked out my window, and it was really beautiful, the sun was rising, this is the sun setting in a different area, so I put my shampoo bottle and my conditioner bottle and put the phone in between them mm -hmm. and just shot out the window. You know, you don't have to have a tripod, so, so you can so work with Betty, that. Betty, sorry. Mm -hmm. How do you get to that? Oh, I see. The long exposure. No, long no, time. no. That was part of, at the bottom of your screen, when you're taking pictures, it says photo, portrait, panel, video, time lapse is the one to the far oh, left. Time yeah, lapse. time oh, lapse. Yes. Okay. So you two can do that. We have some pretty, pretty sunsets here. Does that go through your battery? Just a quick question. <laughs> I don't know. I suppose so. I think every my battery dies and everything. It's all right. Oh, good. It's only to 92%. I was worried about that. <laughs> all right. This this is my live talk. It's so fun. Okay. Live. You know, that's the little yellow thing that we talked about. Make sure that it's on. And when you shoot. Okay. Here's here's the advantage. But there's several parts of that. The loop, bounce, long exposure. Um, okay. My friend and and Nick, my husband, were just sitting there playing cards, and I took a picture. But if it hadn't been for live, and live is, I don't know how it does it, but it's taking you one and a half seconds behind and one and a half seconds further. So you've got three seconds of live. It can be made into a video, whatever. But he was uh, not cooperating, and I could have gotten that picture. Instead, I can control that by editing and going down here to the live button it's way down there and when it puts that little arrow on it that means that's what you're using and so here's Nick I'm not going <laughs> to stop on that one and then I stopped waited till I got see she looked down but when she looked up she smiled there's just that you can just choose it <laughs> it's great and then it says make key photo so whatever was key photo before it brings that up and then you just poke that that wasn't exactly where we were before but it doesn't matter Anyway, so um, you can play with those, and that can works you, so well you, for people blinking. What? Can you get rid of the rest of the pictures, though? In other words, like the ones you don't take? Yeah, you can just turn live off. No, but the, oh. when you do that live sequence, yeah. you know, like five or six pictures, you chose one. Can you get rid of this, the extra ones to take the space up? Is it possible? Yeah, I think when you turn live off, then I need a technical person. But anyway, I think that d does is not available anymore. So I don't have a good answer to that. I don't. I, I think what people say it's. When you choose a key photo, it will save it in your photo album as a separate photo, and then at your discretion, you can choose your own live. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. That makes sense. All right, and this is another example. We're just in a bus, and I'm taking pictures of these this family on a motorcycle, but up comes a woman and a burqa, and both of these are terribly dangerous situations. The one with the burqa has no peripheral vision, uh -huh. and so we're looking at, so when do you stop it, you know? So I just, I could run it back, and it won't give you the best 
shot, it's just somewhere in the middle, and then you can control that. So uh, that's fun. This one, um, I like the fact that this, the child is jumping, and so I'm trying to catch him in midair, and that's, you know, the same as not blinking, whatever. Uh, this, uh, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is a loop. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not, not working well, yeah. But anyway, and then you have um, more the loop just going um, pretty waterfall. So a picture is fine, but now you've got a little video so of it. that's not a video. That's it is. A they loop. call it, yeah. But they, you know, they can, you can call it a video. You but it, lots of it's a loop. But, but you took a picture and put it on loop. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. This, I asked Nick to scoot back just a little bit, but he would not. Anyway, that would have been an interesting photo. But he, <laughs> he, that water was spring flowing, you know, it was, it was pretty good. So I love the fact, he's moving a little bit, but I love the fact that that water is just flowing down. And um, then, I, Nick, thank you for that. Ah, you ah, <laughs> I think the monkey had fleas. But anyway, ah, this, ah, this was, ah. this was Look a... At his eyes. <laughs> And then this was something, this thing in Singapore, we were on a boat going past it, so the stairs are moving too, but it looks like he's regurgitating the people there. They, they prize this, and they probably wouldn't like seeing him do this. But anyway, that's the bounce where it's going out and coming back. Yeah, and then this, the last one was the long exposure, and all of this is part of live. And so I just took a picture of a stream, and then the long exposure makes it look very similar to what you would get on a slow shutter speed. Um, elsewhere. So C is um, camera app and so you've got the arrow, I kind of drew a, a thing on that, if you arrow down from that you're going to be able to set whether you want flash or not, I, I rarely use the flash, the uh, size of the pictures, I, I, you, you have an option for standard sizes uh, down here at the bottom and they are um, I just use whatever I crop it to because I'm not framing. But if you're framing, you'll want it like an 8 by 10 or 4 by 6 or something that's you know, the equivalent. And the timer is there, so you can do 3 seconds or 10 seconds and uh, then take your picture, sit it on a rock, whatever. So that's timers are always good uh, if you put it down and then you won't shake. Um, the... This is what I really believe. You might be a photographer if you won't even share a cell phone pic until you edit it. So I used to make fun of my husband because he would edit everything, and then now I realize it really makes a difference. So it really improves. It. And um, when you have um, editing, I just want you to remember that first, we're, first of all, we're going to um, talk about cropping. And there's so many more things than just reducing the size because you, up there on the left, you can uh, flip it directions. So if the man's looking at this way, then he's looking the other way. Um, you can, if you got it sideways, you can flip it all the way around. And on the right is up at the top is just the different sizes. Down below, you have uh, the cropping where you move it back and forth uh, to... Um, crop it, but also you can move the, t like if you're looking up at a building and now it's coming out weird, you can move it this way or you can move it this way. So it's, uh, do y'all want to try that on your cameras when you go to your uh, picture and then say edit and you're cropping? You've got lots of options. I'll show you with this one. Uh, Okay, this is a fishing village. It was a funny thing because it was like on a tour, and um, they had the paint, the front painted, but not the back. It was just for show. Anyway, but it turned out to be a good picture, but I, where I was standing, I had really too much. So I'm going to crop it and leave maybe the colors in the water, but the sky is pretty ugly, so I'm just going to come down like that and just, you know, mess around with it. And... So that's for cropping, and then we'll talk a minute. I gave it a little bit intensity there, but that, in my mind, made an improvement. The next one, again, cropping. Did I have a question? Yeah, it looked good. Oh, okay. 
This next one, I think we're out in a boat, so we don't have, we can't get any closer. Again, I advise get closer, but that's not always practical. You'd have to get out and swim. So I um, just cropped this, and one thing I was noticing was, well, the sky wasn't too impressive, but also the, um, there you go. yeah, the homes were varied. So some were, they had some wealthy uh, people living side by side with some not so wealthy people, at least based on their homes. And so um, I ended up just doing this, but I thought it was just a nice contrast of the new and the old. And also I made it a little greener, but we'll talk about that. And then this is horrible. It's a, you know, we're on a bus. We can't do anything. We've got a big old ugly fence there. So it's a pretty skyline and some interesting clouds. So we'll just go to crop, 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 crop. Okay. <laughs> and it looks like maybe those buildings are leaning a little bit. So I'm using this thing down at the bottom. Okay. And try to get them. That's Straight. Straightened up, yeah, and sometimes it's hard to tell Horizon what's straight. Lines you know? are yeah. very important to have yeah. straight. Yeah, and you know, there are so many ways that you have to figure, and it's not always that it's a tree straight, but you know, you, you, the water will be straight, but some things it's hard to tell. Anyway, when you crop your picture, that's the real issue. How many megapixels do you end up with? Don't talk about that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I might end up with five or something, but can huh? You, can you back up, back? One? Uh -huh. Which yeah. one? That one to the one I just yes. cropped. Go uh -huh. to back. where you have the option to move the photo forward. And oh, okay. Yes. This is a good one to set up now. Okay. There. Okay, so right there. here, you know, those two and three, let's say this one, so. vertical. See, I don't, yeah, it's like, woo. <laughs> but I'm exaggerating, but you know, usually it's just a fine amount, but that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Usually want to do it a lot. Okay. And this, so you, well, I just walked by a kitchen, there was a glass between me and these men and they're and I just thought well, that's interesting with all the steam going on but gosh dog it there's a trash can there so what do I have to do I have to <laughs> which I really hated because I thought that little for thing in the foreground was interesting but I you know went ahead and cropped it and got rid of some of that trash there but Are you uh, just grabbing the size and the top? yeah yeah you can't see that yeah just grab grabbing the size and top thank you and what I also did, though, was I went to my live feature, and when I, if you see, this guy's face backwards, this guy's around the corner, so you just kind of play with it until it looks like, oh, they're both kind of facing in, doing work. Mm -hmm. So just, again, I'm singing, singing about live, so that was what I ended up with. Now, this is like where to crop, so we're standing back behind us on this side of the bridge and I'm looking at this building and the reflection is really beautiful and with all the yellow and everything but I just uh, not satisfied with that so I get on the bridge and I take a picture and I'm just it's okay and then I get a little closer and I just really like that but you know it's all it's all subjective so that I had a little of the bridge for foreground that yellow one there and so you've got some depth to it with several layers there and the bright yellow, I like that. Now this sky is very pretty, but gosh darn it, there's a parking lot there. So <laughs> here we go. Uh, and that's why I want to get an iPhone 15, because they have uh, megapixel 12 something and 48. I mean, it's like insane. I'm like, okay, I could really crop <laughs> with that one and have something left. But even after I've cropped, you, you can see the result on the second picture, I mean, or this picture. It's either grainy or it's not. So just get the, the um, building out of the way. And um, that's too much sky. Well, I darkened it up a little bit. So now we're going to go to the fun part where we're going to adjust the light. I've already shown you some of that. Um, if you
pull down from the top, you can see your little, um, I can't, it doesn't show here, but you're seeing that screen that shows how much light, like if you're in bed, you want your husband not to wake up, you put the light way down low. But here, you want to put it up high because um, you, if what you start... Screen, what screen are you on? There. Oh, this is, this is all to do with adjusting the light. So uh, it says adjust up there. You so say edit, you know and then you go to, and then you touch. Then see down here, it says adjust. And that's mm -hmm. supposed to look like a light, okay. I guess. And so you go to the light. Go to the, no, don't go to the light. Anyway, so you look at um, those options. And this is uh, always fun part. It's just certainly individual. And every time I was putting this together and go back, I was like, oh, that looks too green. Oh, I think I should put more, you know. So it could never end. You got to just accept it. <laughs> but what I, my goal is, is to make it look natural. And what I think is, what did it look like? What did I think was so gorgeous when I took the picture? Because it looks pretty average right now. And so I work with that. Um, one of these, um, I put contrast. That's the one that's my favorite. But each time you move this back and forth, it's going to give you a different um, type of thing that it's going to work, work with. So picture the final result, and this was um, just a pretty area, but a nothing special view of it, and it looks like, looks like my, does it look like it's slanting a little bit? Any, a little. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so I'll, I'll just try, because that, and the, when you do this, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> And then you got to try to get your finger off of it before it moves again. Um, so we're going to, that lit up the cropping part, but we're going to go back to adjust. And that's got that little arrow on it, and that's what we're doing. So what do I want to do? Uh, hmm, highlights, shadows. Well, that's, that's pretty dark over there, so I could bring that up. And contrast, okay. Uh, let's see, that's okay. Brightness. I'm trying to get the clouds a little darker up there because that's just washed out. And if you were working with Photoshop and all that, you would have an easier time of that, but it's still possible. Vibrance, okay, so saturation would mean the greeners are greener and vibrance would sometimes help the sky get a little bluer. So that's, that's okay. Um, one of the things that's bothersome is this, um, I was trying to get a little foreground, but this is just in the way. I, I, I can eliminate that, and I'll show you how to do that later. And then when I look at this, I think, I really like that little man in the, t in the tent and the little dog, uh -huh. but they're so small, you know, and so guess what? I could crop this. <laughs> Bring it in from the Won't side. No, no, we'll find out. Anyway, so I just love that little scene. And, um, all right, so it's not bad. There if it's go. not got many pixels, it should show up right there. But I did a little better, just kept working with it, and I've got the sky bluer and, you know, uh, removed a little of the weeds. So, so you can, uh, we're learning, we're learning to play with it. This was at Black Gunnison, Black Canyon of the Gunnison, something like that in Colorado. And yeah. we got there at sunset. And it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's just a gorgeous, yeah. That's beautiful. And it was kind of washed out. I was disappointed because I thought, well, sunset, the colors you couldn't really see that well. So I darkened things. So, you know, here we'll just go again to. Um, and a lot of these you just play with because if I had something yeah. really bright, I would just do something with exposure or brilliance and all that yeah. stuff. But um, and a lot of times it doesn't take a lot of numbers to mm -mm. you know make a good difference in a in a photo. See that still doesn't show the clouds. There we go instead, but it gets it dark, so it's frustrating. Uh, there we go. So I did shadows up and. Uh, brightness up and now there's not much greenery but I can 
add a little bit of saturation and vibrance. So it's, it's better. And when we were there, we saw something that said night sky designated. And so we're like, oh, because there's not many places around that have the night sky, meaning there's no lights around. You are in good shape for it. So we brought out our tripods and our um, other. Um, yeah, and so so we put on our big cameras. Well, there's too much light here. We can't really see that. But anyway, there was, yeah, and there was a fence over here. and Can't see it. But anyway, uh, I see it. It's right here. It was lovely. Um, this is um, another one that uh, the live photo was helpful because this guy is moving around. I've never seen a round boat like that. That was very interesting. He's fishing illegally. The guy on our boat said that said so, and he didn't seem real bothered by it. But anyway, this uh, is kind of a messy background with uh, yeah all that. So I'm gonna crop it, but also it's just kind of faded out, and so I'm going to give it a little more life. All right, let's say we crop it here, and I don't really like him in the middle, but his boat's going to go off. It's nice to kind of not have him in the center, but um, then he's got a net in his hand. I like that. And we're going to go to his, so I used the live thing also to get him centered where I wanted it. So we're going to go to that um, adjustment. And so there's not really shadows, but contrast, brightness, you see anything I'm doing here? Yes. Oh, mute the background? Oh, that or, I... Know, just make it blurry. How, oh, okay. How then I, I could not. You, they, oh, you would have to use one of the special apps. I have a Lightroom app, and we'll talk about apps in a few minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is the built-in Apple iOS app. It's made for this phone. And so I like that part, but there's limitations on what it can do. And you can't exchange skies, and you can't, you know. And there is a, an app, like it has a blur feature, but uh, if, I didn't really like it. Yeah. If she it's, took this in portrait mode, oh, she took the picture portrait blurs out the back. Yeah. Uh, but I wasn't that close to it. Automatically. Him. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. However, not every, you know, picture that you want to take is going to fit. You have to be, you know, certain. It doesn't, uh, you can't zoom in on portrait. You know, you can crop, but, so, yeah, portrait. And I think you need to be about eight feet away or something. You can't yeah. be any well, amount of, yeah, yeah with, um, any space to have it work. Yeah. Yeah, because it's got to be focused on that person up front. Anyway, uh, this, again, just stuff that um, when I saw it, it was a lot greener than what my picture turned out. So I uh, upped the saturation and cropped it here because what do we need all this stuff at the bottom? I don't know. Didn't, didn't add anything. So I just went there and I think y'all know how to crop by now. But anyway, so just brought it up and uh, interesting rock formations and don't be afraid to crop things out of your photos as you're seeing today it's like the state of the reviews this is a good this is a good example of that we saw these sheep on the side of the road and i thought look at their tails you know but i really as soon as you get close they turn their butts to you and that's never a good a good look but I was able to take a portrait mode, uh, and I just cropped the other two out. And then I thought that uh, the portrait mode worked you see nicely. The yeah. That's portrait. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I didn't know uh, sheep. They have. I'm not a farm girl. They have long tails. They get cut off all the time. So, uh, you can adjust this where the house shows up better and or not. And this one I made uh, when I took the picture. This is 
the actual way it looked. And I, of course, had a, um, that's why it's nice to have those grid lines. And they've put some other grid lines, too, um, where they show broken. Have y'all noticed that? I mean, this is, I guess, some update. But where if it shows you were to put that photo into a, um, have a judge look at it, they would say, you need to straighten out the mm -hmm. horizon line. Yep. However, she's saying that's the way it looks. You know? No, well, no, I just didn't, I didn't follow my grid. But a lot of times you'll lean out over and you just can't see your grid lines and you can't get it going straight. And so I have it, um, I, I didn't um, do a good job taking the picture. So what? You can straighten it out and crop, right? No. Sometimes you cut off people's faces because they're close to the edge. And when you start straightening it, so it's better if you take it straight the first time. Anyway, it didn't seem to matter. The landscape wasn't insulted. So I, you know, could straighten that out and add a little um, contrast and color. And, you know, just you just have to experiment with it. Everyone's right. different. So, it, yeah, so it turned out good. This... Um, Gal was uh, just so cute and perky. She's a um, bartender. And, uh, but I had all this brickwork in the background, and I thought, well, that might call for a vignette, which is just darkening around the edges. So I, it already looks kind of dark, but I just wanted to show you where the vignette is. Okay, on the, uh, the light thing, the very end. So see, there's some other things that we aren't even touching. Warmth, a lot of times they look too red in the face, and I'll work on that. But anyway, so there at the end, you can just, it, it's just one direction. You just darken or you don't. And so it just makes the focus her. And this I thought was fun. Um, these buildings look very interesting, but I don't know, what, what about a black and white on this one? So. Um, this, I, I don't use the filters because they um, give me a look I don't really want. I'll just make my own look. But these um, filters here, you see them right there? Filters? Yeah. Okay. So the one thing I do like is that they have these black and whites. So... If you, I mean, look how blue that is. They're just, it's just, mm, I rarely like them. I'm trying to remember, and that you can be creative that way. But I'm trying to remember what it looked like. I'm just, you know, a realist. Want it the way it was. So, um, except for black and white, I thought that looked pretty good. They have, that's the mono. They have some that are li slightly different. I didn't like as much. Anyway, so that's another idea for using your um, adjusting. All right, now here's some F. Now we'll tap the circle dots. You get a drop down menu. Did y'all do that? And I'm just pointing out duplicate and hide. Sometimes you want to work on a photo, but you're afraid something's going to happen to it. <laughs> you, you, just, you just push that and duplicate, and then the next picture will be a du exact duplicate. So that you, you can work on one, and you still got the other. It hadn't changed. You don't have to back up on or anything. Um, hide, I like that one too. Hide is, um, has anybody found that? Like if you, want, you have a picture of your Social Security <coughs> number or your credit card or something and you can hide, do hide and it will put that picture of that in um, in that special place where you have to have a code to get it out so whatever your code is the the um, like if you have um, don't want people seeing pictures of your recent surgery uh, then you could hide them in case that comes up I'm like what do I have on my phone here you know it'd be kind of frightening to think about and this is another one that's kind of cool um, copy edits. So I just said copy edits. And I go to this, and this is kind of washed out. And I go to this next one, and it's kind of washed out. But it's almost the same picture, but it's not quite. But anyway, then I go here, back to that, and say paste edits. And it's, it's going to 
bring the same edits that practically the same picture had. So um, if you're taking a lot of the same thing, you're hoping for uh, something, um, I don't know, to interesting, better, whatever, but it's at the same spot, you can just right. do that. <laughs> Pretty vivid. Okay, so this is a fun one to edit the markup. So y'all used that before where you um, have the little pin in a circle, looks like a little pin, and you push that. Have y'all found that? Like you're going to take, take, take your picture and you're going to edit, but instead you just say markup. And you can, I don't know, I'm not sure what to do with the ruler, but the pins and the markers and all that stuff, they're a lot of fun. You can change their color, and you can um, draw. So this is like, I just put this as an example, like to class, subject markup. And then <laughs> you can pull uh, all kinds of little things. You know, an arrow, arrows are nice. And the arrow is pointing to the markup. You have a star, you have giraffes, little animals, and you can write if you want to put your signature and, and use that later. So um, the interesting thing is, I didn't know this, if I pull up a new message and it's, it doesn't have all these things down there, do y'all, have y'all seen those on your messages? Okay. No. I just didn't know you've got to got to swipe, you know, and then they're all there. Before, it's kind of that place where it corrects your spelling and stuff like that, and then you swipe over, and you have all these options that you don't have to, you can just pick a picture or take a picture or do a markup or, you know, maybe you want to just circle something in red on your email, so it's it's a handy thing. So you could do anything with it. Uh, I could have removed my wrinkles, but instead I just removed my teeth. This is the... Uh, <laughs> markup for the little the little plus down there so if you're writing in too good and you want to add something to something you can do text uh, you can add a shape that's where the arrows were uh, stickers kind of stupid whatever so an example my uh, grand doggy lives with a lizard who likes to get on his stomach because it's warmer the lizards like heat so I just it's stu it's do stupid uh. stuff with that and you can uh, do something with the opacity you can do something any color um, and that little dropper up there is kind of neat if you point if you use that it'll give you a lot of the color you might have had a little speck of and you do the dropper on it you'll have to play with that all right this is a friend of mine. She said, take a picture of me. It's my 90, it's my 94th birthday. Take a picture from my new TV. And when I took the picture, was this girl was going, ah. So I thought, well, I'll use that, you know. So we just have, <laughs> just have fun with it. Okay. So um, one of the things that we're going to, let's see, we're on J is, okay, the square with the arrow down here. Anyway, you, let me get this back. There's a lot of things, oh, I know which one. There's a lot of things that you can do. Uh, you can send, you know, you go to the square, you can send out to your friends, you know, through Facebook messaging, all this stuff, just a message. But there's some other things down below that are interesting. One is you can use your picture as wallpaper. So I often do that, and there's uh, you can actually line it up or you can have eight different pictures alternating every few minutes or something. So that's kind of fun to put a pretty picture for your wallpaper. I know you, grandkids come first, but you might want to put a pretty picture. And then the other thing is you like can assign a picture to a contact. I, I decided I didn't want my picture on a contact because then the, it comes up pretty big. But <laughs> my, my contact with George Clooney, I did want to have his picture, so uh -huh. I added that on there. And then... Oh, yeah. <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> sorry, 
Then I love this part where you pull up on the picture and you can label it and you can find it forever. You're like, where is that picture? And you're going through thousands of pictures trying mm -hmm. to find it and the label's so great. And I like this one because it's Monet's garden. And But I put boat and the reason I did that was because there was a very handsome young man in that boat and that just always appealed to me. So I can look that up occasionally. <laughs> and then um, another feature that is fun is, um, have y'all seen the, the map feature? You, well, you have to have three yeah. photos at the same time. Then you hit the, th the three, three dots, you go down a bit, and it shows a map. And it shows you, you know, where you've taken pictures. And like more recently, that shows Asia. And we're over here and over here. So it's just kind of fun. And then the picture that, the next picture, it tells me at the top where it was taken, but maybe I want to know where that is because I don't know what Po Nagar Chom Towers is. And then I can just, um, sorry, you got to have three open. <laughs> going to go down to show map. Let me, okay, show map. And when I show the map here, that, well, that used to be the one that came up Maybe not today, but anyway, it's in and it's an, in amongst there, and you can find out exactly where it is. It's really nice. And then, you know, the other way is um, pull up, and you can find it down here. So uh, there's just so many features that I don't pull up. You know, you just got to keep going a little bit more, and you'll or you know go down a little bit further on that menu. Um, the other thing, uh, filter, and I didn't know about this, it's, again, you got to have three, three up. You go here and filter. Now you have, I just want to see my favorites. Or which ones have I edited? So I can use one of those. Or just do all my videos, photos, some, anyway. So I thought that was nice. You could just pull those up. And you can do that also by going to albums and underneath albums. It has some of that separated out. But um, that was a new one. Okay, this is one of my favorite apps, and it's called Touch Retouch. How, has anybody used that one? No. Touch Retouch? No. Okay. That one is, um, let's see, I'm on O already. Oh. Now, it was free for me. It may cost three ninety nine or something, but it... It removes objects, it removes lines, it's, so the part here is showing objects. And well, it shows objects, lines, meshes. I actually took a picture of some cats behind a fence and it removed all that mesh, you could just see the cat. It was kind of clone stamp, that's, you know, getting rid of larger objects. Now, I'm gonna put an X over that because the blur feature, because you asked about the blur feature, you can pay money to have the blur feature where it blurs out the background. I don't, yeah. So uh, this, is, uh, <laughs> this is a horrible shot. I'm, we're driving down the street, and I see this artwork in Albuquerque on this building. It was just beautiful. And so I, now you have to add the app Touch Retouch. I, since I have it on my phone, I'm going to just, um, sorry, go here to edit, and then these three dots, and it comes up. So hopefully it'll work like that for you. But I can get rid of some of this by um, actually editing, I'm sorry, by cropping, but some of this, like, we'll just pretend I'm, I'm not going to crop it. I want to get rid of this, so it's kind of hard at the edge. But anyway, I'm just putting this in the same color I want to get rid of it. And you can do, you can change the hardness, opacity, it, you know, you can move it around so that uh, you're, it's a delicate or you're moving a lot of stuff. When I go to lines and I come here, uh, go, and then now I've got all this stuff. Well, what am I going to do with that? So, um, and that looks a little thick, thicker than I need. You can move these little things around, go. Getting rid of tailbone lines. Nothing worse than having a beautiful scene 
and it seems like an isolated area and there's nothing there but a couple of telephone lines and so I don't have any shame in removing those. If I'm in a contest that says don't do that, then I'll not do it. There are some contests they don't want you to remove anything. It has to all be natural. It's hard to find a natural place these days. So again, here's um, on there the clone thing and so I'm just playing around with it but what I'll show you is I got, you know, this is a mess, but anyway. Um, that, so I was able to get rid of a lot of the junk just by doing that. I think I made the hedge go over a little further and I made the sky a little darker. So it was fun. I, I liked the result. I'm not going to enter in a contest, but I liked it. I love these roses. I thought they were beautiful. I'm holding them, trying to get them with that green background. And then when I Enlarge them like there's spots there. There's so oh, I don't know that doesn't look good. It looks like it wasn't as perfect as I thought, but I can make it perfect. So, <laughs> so I just you know go to edit and I go to touch retouch, and then you just enlarge those areas mm -hmm. and you got a little thing that well you just touch it to that and touch to that one and maybe to that one and okay. It's starting to liven up here. This is. Uh, I'm, he I'm healing it. Oh, I, I have the magic touch. I know I have the magic touch. It's so great. But anyway, and so um, this that's you know just easy to do. And then I can't. Yeah. Then I then I you know so don't don't those look beautiful? They are very pretty roses. I cheated, I know, but anyway, it's that's cheating. that was fun. Yeah, fun. they do look pretty. Okay, this is just silliness. Nick was, you know, on Halloween acting like he was scared. It was kind of a gross looking thing. And so it's a good practice. Like just do stuff like this. You gotta get get rid of things. So I just I don't know if you can tell, but over there there's something on the other side of that pumpkin and all these skylights and the caves jewelers and all that stuff. So I just used retouch and got, it's not, there's not anything I'm going to do with this picture. I'm just having fun and it's good practice, you know, so I, except for show y'all. Okay, so we, I took this picture. I love this, but something, you know, it's just too far away, something. And then these, these little pickets were good, but they're still, they're showing. And so I took some of the greenery and put it over on top of the pickets. I did some, uh, some uh, uh, cutting back anyway and then uh, up here I didn't like the way this I didn't mind the the Chinese but I didn't like this all you know so anyway so I did some of that magic with touch retouch I didn't do anything so I can't okay so I got rid of the yeah and I brought it in a little bit and there's some people down there and I, I like it it didn't didn't ruin it uh the megapixels too badly. All right, we're on that last one. To, uh, removing the lines. Uh, oh whoa. my gosh, okay. <laughs> what is going to happen here? Okay, I'm not, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to really remove the lines. That's a, <laughs> but, but I'll show you. It, it is, it's amazing. Um, I took the picture because of the lines, obviously, and they really were on every corner. But, you know, if I wanted to, had to clean this up, I'd be taking signs off and all kinds of stuff. But um, the retouch, okay. I'm not going to take all these off, I promise you. But you don't have to have a straight finger. You just kind of get close to the line. See how wavy mine is, yeah. And then, so it's, it works pretty well. You have to. Yeah, it depends on how motivated you are. I think I'd start with a better picture than this to start removing the lines. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I wouldn't. I just took it because of the lines. It was, it was kind of sad. All right, so yeah, but it wasn't like I saw it when I saw it. It was more intense. Yeah, and so I just, you know, darkened it up, did a little contrast, and that was more what I actually saw. And then this, um, I love it, love the reflections. Reflections are good. Um, the clouds on the mountains, but it just is a little blue. And so I, you know, that may be grayer than it needs to be. So just, but I just thought that looked more natural. So that's kind of what 
unless you're trying to be real artistic, trying, you're trying to go for natural. This, I love clouds, you may not have noticed that, but anyway, I have a lot of <laughs> cloud pictures, mm -hmm. and um, this one was obviously taken out of the window. It was just kind of an unusual cloud, and uh, so, uh, yeah, you think so? I guess it could be interpreted. Yeah, all right. Anyway, might want a little foreground there, maybe not. And then that needs definitely some adjustment on the light because you sometimes think that that might be exaggerated. The Colorado skies are really very blue. It's not, not an exaggeration. So you can, you can improve. This is slightly tilted and not as green, and so I just brought up the highway a little bit and darkened up the clouds, which did look ominous, but not so much on my just regular iPhone photo. So these are gorgeous mountains in the morning. There's red light on them, but golly, they were far away, and I didn't want to take a hike that morning, so I just brought them up and um, worked on the sky a little bit. But, you know, you don't need the whole sky. And... This was just that normal blue, but some people were in the way over there, so goodbye, people. Anyway, and then a little richer green to it, maybe darkened the sky a bit. And this oh, was, wow. I know, this actually, sadly enough, was not exactly a sunset. It was a fire that just about burned Estes Park down, so it was oh. coming in, and it had the whole sky look blue, blue, and then this real orange, yeah. And so I... Um, this is one that, you know, you can take the telephone pole out or you can just um, crop, it all, crop it up and because the sky is the feature, but it's nice to have the mountains. So I might get rid of that telephone pole and, and certainly go to the adjust and darken those clouds uh, contrast because they were, they were pretty ominous in the middle of the day. And... Then just a regular uh, beautiful mountain scene, uh, get, getting the colors a little brighter, mm -hmm. getting the sky a little darker. And uh, this is <laughs> a beautiful picture. I saw it. I like the description. Taken with the amazing reheld the Apple on an iPhone 15 Pro Max and edited with LRPS, Luminar, Nick, Excelver. That's what I'm trying to avoid. I like the just, you know, I'm not telling you about a lot of apps, but there are a few. Uh, especially touch retouch that I like so it gets carried you could really get into camera apps so that is an amazing assortment I do have one square with several in it but nothing like that it's can't you see that's been digitally altered it's gotten where we can't believe anything can you I mean it's just crazy yeah so Snapseed is a uh, one that's been recommended and I've used that occasionally but uh, there's it's pretty much the same stuff you can get um, what we have this uh, but I took a picture of a bird and I'm saying if I were to do something with that I think a judge would knock me off because that shadow of that bird is too low so there's a thing here called expand right up there expand and you actually expand your screen so I expanded it just put a little bit more uh, bottom to that where the, the wow. it didn't run into the Anyway, so just little things like that can make a difference. This guy, I like him, but he's I was harsh sunlight. That's you know why you want to take things at the take in the beginning of the day, in the end of the day, in the middle of the day. Things it's harsh, but there's a, a way to uh, with Snapseed. It has a, a dodge and burn uh, a temperature, a couple of, well like three different settings, and so he still looks a little orangey, but. He, you can see a little more of him just by, I can take a brush, there's a brush, as you see that little brush, anyway, and just, and you can dodge and burn, you can have it a little less light or a little more or whatever, or you can darken him. So uh, those are things, dodge and burn, that people use with Photoshop all day long. Lightroom. So Lightroom is on the iPhones now, and so the some of the recommendations that have been for Snapseed are now going to Lightroom because that's available. And um, th one thing I would recommend for you, uh, if you're serious about your iPhone photography, is just to take iPhone photography school. 
Uh, I know there's a bunch of them. I took this several years ago, and it really made a huge difference, uh, not just in my iPhone photography, but in, in with my big camera, and uh, because you just being able to see uh, what. Is that the one you took? Yes, and it's what I love about it is like it's not very expensive. I looked up the price, and it was um, forty nine for the basic and ninety nine for editing. I think I paid ninety nine for basic and 300 for editing or something and it was worth every penny and what they do is they keep updating and you still get to have this still watch it you're not having to pay more so i really What's like that password? Huh? what <laughs> password oh yeah okay the um the um other things that i would suggest are just you know coming here we learn something all the time we have a lot of, uh, Russell Graves was our award night speaker, and he's great, and he takes people out and, and uh, teaches them on the field. Okay. There's a guy online I watched called Tin Man, Tin Man Lee. He's, he's Chinese, I think, and he's great. He gives a lot of secrets for free. And, uh, you know, go out to the museums, look at pictures wherever you go. Um, there's magazines like Outdoor Photography. Uh, look at uh, Rembrandt, Da Vinci, they were the masters of light. So all of that translates into just being uh, more visually aware. And somebody said, vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. So if you can, you can learn to do that. Uh, Scott Kelby, an author, pointed out, great photos are not around your house. So you need to get outdoors, and that's um, why... I have so many outdoor photos. I love it, and I don't have anything in my house that's worth photographing. <laughs> um, these last pictures are just um, kind of comparisons. These are this was an iPhone photo, and I took out the mast and you know just small things. Uh, but some of these are not iPhone photos, and I don't know if you can tell the difference. This was um, taken with a long lens on my uh, DSLR because I couldn't get out there with the boy and so I had to um, take it and then I could get close up but unfortunately the whole uh, the thing you're standing on I'm taking pictures the whole thing's moving it's uh, so it's not the sharpest thing and I don't have a tripod so when I'm I'm old enough when I'm using a long lens I really need a tripod and um, this little girl I just um, had to cut out some stuff that kitchenware stuff she didn't need the microwave in there and then I just flipped her around turning the other way just you know but she's I don't see her as sharp sharp again not using a tripod uh, this was uh, a cruise I was on chubby checkers was on there and I had the long lens and I could brace it on the seat and it was a little bit pretty good considering how far away he was and then I tried my iPhone and I got some good news there because when I put it in that loop, you know, I'm still enjoying the loop. And these were pretty clear. I, I didn't tell her to powder her nose where I took the picture. But anyway, um, this, these, this is an iPhone. This is an iPhone. This is a um, child I took a picture of, and I didn't know how beautifully his eyes and the beach and the, you know, the whole thing match. I was so excited about it. There's more of my clouds, just heading down the highway, just being out and seeing the loveliness and I sat on this porch and looked out and I was like oh my gosh look at this scene get my iPhone out <laughs> yes and then this we have an artist come to Estes Park where we stay in the summer and, and she was painting and I love that intensity she's looking at her uh, her photo that she, well photo her painting she was painting for a contest and they had hour and a half she did a great job and uh, then there's that blue, blue sky of Colorado. And this, mm -hmm. so this was a big camera. This was the um, iPhone. And the, what do you think this was? <laughs> That's the iPhone. Nope, it was the big camera. It was the 50 Prime lens. Yeah. And, yeah. and then this was an iPhone. And this was, I like reflections. Uh, it would have been prettier in the, earlier in the day, but with the little shade, it was okay. I like the. The way that turned out and this one um, iPhone this was an iPhone uh, not it's a little grainy 
And this was an iPhone, I got tickled because <laughs> I was sitting eating with somebody and somebody said, there's a rainbow outside. And so <laughs> we all ran outside and this woman grabbed her big camera and I had my little iPhone and I think mine turned out a lot better. Uh, I, there was a building in the way, but there was a flower pot in front of us. So I just squatted down to get the flowers to hide the building, but it was an in, such an intense, rainbow, though? it was so intense. Do that. I didn't do, what do you mean do that? It was just intense. I, I mean, I've never seen a rainbow. Yeah, that's the thing. It's that mountain air. It doesn't have any, uh, it was just amazing. So that's why we were <laughs> running with our cameras. But that's the only camera I had, but it, I thought it think, came out fine. And um, let's see, this one. I love it when there's, oh yeah, that was, this was with my Canon. And I love it when you've got clouds around and um, trying to get a little foreground there. This was my iPhone. And then I took this outside and sprayed it with a little water, <laughs> my amaryllis, and uh, I like it. it. That was with the big camera. And hey, Robeson has some great uh, sunsets and some things to, to take pictures of, but it's you know nice when you can travel and get outside that. This was a photo that was um, on a tripod uh, of the sunset, which didn't really occur, but the clouds were pretty anyway and more oh, fog, yeah. I know. And so this was uh, the Canon, and this was, I don't know, let's see what this was. I have a, when I pull it up, it should give me information, but I can't pull it up. Oh, well. So I, I go into a house uh, cabin, uh, no, unoccupied, and these are professionals, uh, these pictures are displayed, and I just love them, you know, and again, I'm just looking everywhere I go of beautiful pictures. I wish I could claim them, but they, they weren't mine. And then sometimes you can just get tips from the iPhone. And uh, this is Bucky's bathroom. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so I just thought those were very pretty and you know, maybe I can get that, but that leading line with the fence and all the flowers, the big ones up front, just like, yeah, I could do that. So it's kind of cute. But anyway, do you have any questions? We covered a lot, but that's why I gave you the handout. Maybe you can go back and find out where that was. Uh huh. Are you capturing these in raw? Is no, no, I, I quit doing raw because I just don't think I'll ever frame it or blow it up or whatever. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, so it's just, you know. So you're doing all the editing on the phone. You're not moving them into Lightroom on the, on no. the computer. No, right? and so I left y'all's instructions so you, if you uh, want to, you know, move it over from your phone to uh, your computer and work on it, great, but I, I, I take my big camera and I move those pictures over to edit them on my phone just because I, I'm comfortable with that. Yes? Uh, I saw one of you that was trying to follow you and it came up with F stop, I think on the top. Yeah, the F, um, the portrait mode. Uh -huh. Oh, it's on the portrait mode. Yes. On the top, it said, yeah, it said F, and then down below you can control the F, so it's like, uh, you know, F2 to 8 to F8 okay. or something. Oh. Both of, you can't change up stop in edit. Like, you know, like mm. No, it's just no. that, just a portrait. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, wouldn't it? <laughs> but there's ways to do it. Yeah. Uh, Betty, I missed at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, all the features you showed us early on, are they with the camera app on your iPhone? Mm -hmm. Or is that a different app? It's the it's different app for the full like Lightroom or something like that. Or no, I use native app. Native app, app which is the, what that you were given by Apple that with your phone, and then I added retouch, retouch, and then I talked about Snapseed and, and Lightroom, but I don't use Lightroom, and I rarely use so mainly touch and retouch, and and the native app or my tools and they're right there and that's why I said it's so great because you can just go down the street as long as you have a chauffeur like I do and just edit your pictures and then you can get in the doctor's office and you're sitting there bored and you can edit you know and play around maybe take pictures of something in the doctor's office. And then you can come in and get into a monthly photo contest and win. There you go. And so don't, don't think you can't take good pictures. Well, I'm done. <laughs> You're welcome. And they even make phone calls and you can text on them. <laughs> okay. I forgot to ask one question. How many of you are new here? 